NASA researchers have found something incredible in the samples of the asteroid Bennu that is shaking up our knowledge of its origin and also our understanding of the origin of life. Stay tuned to find out everything you need to know about Bennu's humid and cheerful origins. If you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment so we can get the algorithm to show this important topic to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. The asteroid Bennu is currently causing excitement in the research world. NASA scientists have taken a close look at the dust and rock samples from the tiny body and discovered something truly spectacular. To understand how this surprising discovery came about, however, we first have to go back a few years and look at a very specific space probe as part of the NASA-led New Frontiers program, which aims to advance the exploration of the solar system through space probes. Various probes were sent into space. These include the Pluto probe New Horizons, the Jupiter Jupiter probe Juno, and, importantly for us today, the OSIRIS-REx probe. The complicated name stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer. Dude NASA, could it get any more complicated? It's a probe that was supposed to take a closer look at the asteroid Bennu. Of course, you could ask yourself why Bennu of all things should be the chosen one as there are millions of asteroids in our solar system. Let me know in the comments which asteroids you still know by name. Let's see if we can all get together a million eight hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred and twenty-four. This is actually NASA's current asteroid count. The fact that Bennu is the chosen one is not because he was made to save Hogwarts from the evil wizard, whose name is not mentioned. No, Bennu has many other qualities that made a mission to him worthwhile. It has a diameter of around 492 meters, and is classified as a potentially dangerous asteroid. It is also of great scientific interest for many reasons. It is considered a primitive asteroid because it has remained largely unchanged since the formation of the solar system and could therefore naturally carry important traces from the early days of our system. It was also thought that Bennu could carry organic molecules such as amino acids, which are thought to be the building blocks of life. Researchers were really keen to be able to study these molecules, perhaps to learn more about how life began on Earth or whether similar building blocks could exist elsewhere in the solar system. It was also thought that Bennu might contain water in the form of hydrated minerals. This water would be the elixir of life in the truest sense of the word. It could provide information about how the water came to Earth and such water deposits on asteroids could also serve as a resource for future space missions. As you can see, Bennu is simply a fantastic target and everyone wanted to see more of this superstar. A bit like at the Oscars when Brad Pitt is on the red carpet and everyone is dying to get some rehearsal, um, photos of him. On September 8th, 2016, the probe set off with no lesser goal than to collect soil samples from the surface of Bennu and then bring them back to Earth because the researchers hoped that the collected samples would provide important information about the formation of the solar system and the materials from which it was formed. In addition, OSIRIS-REx should investigate the composition of Bennu and learn more about its mineralogical and chemical properties, for example. This is important because it can help to learn more about the early days of the solar system and, above all, the role of asteroids in providing water and organic compounds on Earth which is of great importance for the current discovery. In addition, the probe should map the asteroid and characterize its physical properties and, for example, analyze more about its surface topography, size, rotation, and so on. Quite a lot of tasks for such a small probe. I'm already overwhelmed when I have to empty the dishwasher. How does Osiris Rex feel? In any case, the probe successfully reached Bennu in December 2018 took the samples and sent them back to Earth. The package then arrived on Earth on time, on 24th September 2023, when the probe simply dropped it from a height of thousands of meters as it flew past the Earth. It was a bit like Amazon Prime, but without the pack station and annoying delivery notifications. The researchers were able to recover the landing capsule quickly and safely, after its arrival on Earth, in the middle of the Utah desert, and subject it to a nitrogen purge in a sterile laboratory to avoid contamination. OSIRIS-REx then flew straight on again, 
and paid a visit to Apophis. But now I can already hear some of you asking, what do the researchers want with a piece of dirt from an asteroid? Quite simply, asteroids are considered time capsules because they reflect the conditions and circumstances in the solar system at that time, as we have already explained. Asteroids are therefore like the fossils of the Earth, which also tell us a lot about past eras. They are the grandfathers of the solar system, so to speak, who take their grandchildren on their laps, open a book, and tell us about the good old days, and that everything was always better in the past. So now, we finally come to the Poodle's e or Asteroids core and the researchers' new assumptions. They assume that the asteroid could possibly have come from an ocean world. The reason for this assumption is the water particles trapped in minerals. It has already been assumed that something like this exists on Bennu. The samples from the probe have now confirmed this once again. Imagine that. This small body in our solar system could have been part of a huge ocean planet, somewhere far out in space. The researchers say that such an ocean planet could be similar to Saturn's moon Enceladus, which is particularly famous for its suspected water reserves under its icy shell. Bennu could then have broken off from its world many billions of years ago for reasons still unknown and flown the long way to us in the solar system. Of course, these are just assumptions for now, but the thought alone gives me goosebumps because it just shows how big our cosmos is and how little we actually know. The researchers are now examining a few milligrams of the 250 gram sample at the Kuiper Arizona Laboratory for astromaterial analysis. Investigator Dante Loretta says, we have over 1,000 particles larger than half a millimeter, 28 particles larger than a centimeter, and the largest particle is 3.5 centimeters. It's an impressive collection full of really big stones. He goes on to report that the samples differ significantly at the isotope level from what has otherwise been found in meteorite samples on Earth, for example. In addition to the trapped water, which in itself is a sensational report, the samples are also said to have a high density of carbon, nitrogen, sulfur and above all phosphorus. The latter is truly astonishing and is causing the researchers a bit of a headache as phosphorus is one of the most important building blocks for the development of living cells. This supports the hypothesis that life on Earth originated from material left on the Earth's surface by asteroids when they crashed down onto the Earth's surface during the turbulent early history of our planet. And the phosphorus concentration of the Bennu samples is astonishingly high. In the end, we really are all descended from Bennu, the Bennuians as a transboundary species or something. And if you then consider that the remains of the ocean planet could still be out there somewhere, then perhaps our cousins are flying around back there. At the moment, the researchers are continuing to analyze the samples. And for the researchers involved, it really is a once-in-a-lifetime experience as such, an opportunity to examine soil samples from extraterrestrial celestial bodies is really rare. It is only the third time in history that scientists have succeeded in bringing pieces of an asteroid safely back to Earth. So while the researchers, excited as they are in the lab, don't sleep a wink, we'll have to wait a little longer to find out more and perhaps finally know what kind of dank past Bennu actually has behind it. Loretta says, we're going to be busy for a long time that's an enormous amount of sampling for us. But at the next Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in Texas in March, the team plans to report more about the analysis, and I will, of course, keep you up to date. But this is only possible if you follow my channel, as I know from the statistics that more than half of the viewers have not subscribed. It's free and you're helping me a lot. So everyone, keep pressing the subscribe button. Thank you very, very much. But we don't always have to fly into space to collect asteroid samples. Sometimes they come to us, especially in the Antarctic. There are thousands of meteorites from space lying around, and NASA researchers have just found something absolutely incredible under the eternal ice. Sounds a bit like John Carpenter's thing from another world. You can find out all about it and see spectacular original footage in the video below. Be sure to click on it. And if you want to continue supporting my work and have real meteorites, visit my Astro Shop. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.